you're closing our plan. This is our plan, you know. We don't own it, but this is our plan. You know, everybody's waiting on that last truck. We got about 100 jobs left. Okay, here come the last truck. I said, wow, it's coming. It's coming. What went through my mind? This is it, this is real. I was like, this is it. I couldn't, what went through my mind was I couldn't believe the reaction of the people, of our, you know, my friends, my family, of GM family, that we are so proud of our work. Today we're announcing our plan to, over time, cease production at four GM truck assembly plants. Moraine, Ohio, at the end of the current model year run, or sooner if market demand dictates. GM dictates. closing the plant in Moraine, sending a shockwave through the valley. The the right now they will come before the end of the year. The 2,500 workers vanishing from Moraine. The plant turns hurt. out four different models of SUVs, something Americans are just not it's buying not right just now. GM. Uh, we are suddenly in the slowest auto sales market in this country in 15 years. This GM plant will close December 23rd, just two days before Christmas. They called and talked to the lower level management and then at 2.30 they talked to us and we went to a meeting and seen on closed circuit TV that they were shutting the plant down and he cut it. What do you think of the timing? Merry fucking Christmas. See ya. We're all shocked. I'm just kind of shocked. I can't believe this. After all we gave them, after all we done, and all the money we made them, they dropping a bomb on us like this. I grew up in Tennessee with nothing, you know, and I lived in the east end of Dayton when I came here with nothing. You know, and then I got this job. My mother-in-law got me this job. You know, and now I live in a nice house in a nice neighborhood. You know, my kids go to a good school. I've took my, you know, my goal is I've took my kids several places that they would never have gotten to go before unless I had this job. I thought I was going to retire from GM, and it didn't work out that way. So now I have to do something else. I'm 47 years old. I've got three kids that are grown, and I've got six grandchildren, and I would probably just, I don't know. I. You know, I, I couldn't see myself going back to school. You know, not after doing this. This has been my life. You know, I'm a factory worker. I'm proud of it. I remember my first day, 6 2 That was my first day. March 13th, 1995. February 6th, 95. I used to bag groceries. I went from 4.35 to almost $10 an hour, so I was happy to be there. I mean, that was a big jump. I was just fresh out of high school. It was overwhelming then to see something this big. And I came from the Navy, so I was on an aircraft carrier, so.
everything was new and big and glamorous almost. It was very glamorous. 24 years old, walked in there, you know, of course being a female, walking into this plant with all these men. You know, and they were whistling and hooping and hollering. And we were young, we were only 20-ish back then, and we all looked good and tan and skinny. Our supervisor, uh, um, Larry Osborne, big, big, big man, come up, you know, and he's comes and grabs us girls and walks us down the aisle and, you know, first thing he asks, did you play softball? Uh, yeah. Okay, you're on my team. Okay. Do you always get these ideas that there's going to be a lot of uh, redneck kind of guys, you know, hillbillies, you know, they're going to beat you up or something, I guess. That's kind of weird to say, but you're always kind of scared of that kind of attitude. But you come in and it's just regular people, men and women working together. You just never thought that. It was rough. Yes, it was. My hands were, for the first week or three months, my hands were so sore I couldn't even turn the key in the car. It's very physical. You, you know, when you're pulling a sheet of, of tin, it's six foot, or eight foot by four feet, usually. And then you gotta slide it down on a table. It'll cut the crap out of you. You know, I came here with the attitude that, hey, I'm gonna work triples. You know, hey, I, I, want, I want all the money I can get, you know? <laughs> And my, in my first eight hours, I'm like, heck with this, I'm going to quit. I went home with my fingers, could not move, and I thought, I cannot do this. And my dad said, you go in there and do not say you can't do anything, and you just do it. I work with a great bunch of guys. The best tradesmen I've ever worked with in my life. There's a lot of talent there. Hundreds of years of experience. These are vehicles we're building that people are gonna be driving their families in. I thought it was the greatest job I ever had. The people that are telling you what to do don't really know what they're doing, you know, so, but they've got college educations. I don't have a college education, but I'm 52 years old and I've been doing this since I've been 18, so if you want to count, count the time, I've got a couple doctorates, a few master's degrees, and, you know, but since I don't have that certificate, they, they don't want to listen to me. In my opinion, a good tool maker is actually a frustrated artist. I can't draw and I can't paint, but I can make you anything you want out of metal, you know, and make it precision and make it right. The building itself is three quarters of a mile long. It is all one building. I forget how many acres are under roof, but it's a bunch. There's something like 25 miles of conveyor in this building. Now, that's all body saw. We take all these pieces, window frame, your A post, your B post, your doors, and we actually weld them together to make the body. But it's just a strictly metal body. There's nothing on it. And this is a yard once they're done. It makes me sad to see that all these high quality vehicles are sitting here and nobody wants them anymore. But it makes me proud to see all these high quality vehicles sitting here because I know what it went, it went into building that. I know how much hard works in that truck. To be downright honest with you, I really don't know what I think. It's just like a blender. You know, sometimes something will pop to the top and then it'll disappear, and then something else will pop to the top, you know, and 
then you go, oh, I didn't think of that. Or, But deep in my heart, and it's probably fairyland stuff, but deep in my heart, I think we're going to get another product. The auto industry is bleeding cash and badly they need money Things right are so now. bad the government has to step in and bail out the big three automakers. The union is one collapse. big reason why the big three are in a world of hurt. This is all the union's fault. The abuses of the union system. If the unions won't bend, we should not lend. Labor costs are $73 an hour for Detroit, but only $44 for non-Detroit producers. For every employee they have, it runs about $70 per hour. UAW workers earn as much as $75 an hour. Charlie, look at that. 78 bucks an hour for a GM guy. Who? GM, GM workers. They said it on the news. GM workers make $70, $70 bucks an, hour. an hour. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> I was out in the restaurant and took everything I had to keep my mouth shut when I heard the people behind me cracking jokes on how much an hour we make. You know, I felt like just standing up and shouting over the booth, we do not make that much money. Don't you people understand? It's exaggeration. I do not make $75 an hour. I probably make a third of that. And I would challenge anybody to go inside that plant and work on that assembly line nine and a half to 10 hours a day and say that I don't deserve that $25 an hour. Okay, there's nothing wrong with being able to provide a good income and benefits for your family. We don't make any more than Toyota or Honda makes an hour on that job. The only thing difference between us and Toyota and Honda is Toyota and Honda do not have the retirees to take care of like GM and Ford and Chrysler do. I mean, I've had guys tell me, you know, that I'm overpaid because I'm a union employee. I mean, not just at the GM. When I worked out of the construct, IBEW construction hall, I had guys tell me that. Non-union electricians. And I'd ask them, well, how much do you make? And, you know, this was several years ago. They'd say, well, I make $18 an hour. I said, well, we make 21 And you know what? If, I, if we as a union volunteer to make $18 an hour like you, next week your contractor's going to come through and say, okay, you're working for $14 an hour so that I will have a competitive edge against them. I said, where do you want to draw the line? Where I work for a dollar an hour and you do it for free? I watched my grandfather establish himself in the union back in the early 70s when black men didn't have that ability. And him to reach the points that he did, it was wonderful. You got everybody that's saying, let General Motors declare bankruptcy. Well, let, this is just my neighborhood. The, the, the fella in the White House over there, retired Delphi. The fella where that black pickup truck is, retired Delphi. The house on the corner, I worked with, the, the, the guy's mother lives there, retired General Motors, retired from our truck plant. These people right next door, retired Delphi. For one block, there's one, two, three, four, five, six houses that could have been affected by the, the bankruptcy. That's 50% of the houses just in this block that are tied to General Motors in one way or another, whether through Delphi or through General Motors or through the engine plant. That's, wow. I think we're at the end of the good life, so to speak. I don't, I don't think that it's going to be a thing that people can attain anymore. I think everything, we're not going to go up anymore. We're either going to level off or even have a downtrend. It's all changing now. Go to Walmart and shop. Walmart, when it first opened, their big selling point was American made. Now if it's American made, they don't have it. We're not going to have a manufacturing base anymore. It's going to be foreign owned. People are talking about it more and more every day, and, and it's, and 
in a way that's a good thing because people are talking about it but also it's a bad thing because it's making you realize that the end is coming soon you know to get out of here now. They want me out, I'm ready to go. Uh, struggled with it, but now I'm ready to go. I mean, it's come to the end, so I kind of realized that, and uh, mm -hmm. I'll accept my fate and go on from there. I'm tired of messing with this. What do you mean? I gotta start over again. Either get an education or a job. I are no job, especially in Ohio. Education I don't got, most people here don't have a good education or they'd be somewhere else. I mean, it's the best deal everybody's got right here. If not, you'd be somewhere else. What's next for you? I don't know. That's what all this is about. Future education for us guys who don't feel like getting any more education. Too old for it. The old dog new trick routine, I guess. Do you know how to, like, you know, you computer savvy pretty much? Not a bit. Not a bit? Don't even have a computer. What's that? Don't have a computer. Don't have one. You think that's going to matter for jobs? Computer? I hope not. If we don't start taking care of the people right here in our own country, you know, we spend thousands and thousands of dollars fighting wars in other countries. You know, let's take care of our own people here. Let, let's, whatever we make, you know, let's make it here, buy it here, you know, take care of our own people here. I have to go out here and reinvent myself at 45 years old. You know, I've got a high school diploma, and this is all I know. And I'm not trying to make anybody feel sorry for me or, you know, but let somebody get in here and work 10 and 12 hours a day doing the same thing all day long. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody is made out for that, you know. There's 16 years of accumulation of me working at General Motors. Tools and just different scales. And of course, your ever present Marine Assembly coffee mug, which probably is about as sanitary as a hog barn. Today's the fifth, so, what, 18 more days? Is which is actually only uh, five. 10 working days, maybe. My sister-in-law works over here in the body shop. She'll be over here with my toolbox. And we're gonna just pull my toolbox out. See like this guy's doing here.
23 freaking years. And for the last 22 years and nine months, it sucked really bad. But when we found out we were losing our jobs, we're like, I love this place. I mean, we ain't kidding. You know? All right. I will see you tomorrow. Spend it! Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. Love you too. Okay, bye. bye. I'll see you. Bye. 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 Okay. Every day right now, we still have to get up, come to work. Whatever your job is, do that job to the best of your ability. And that's what you do every day. That's right. It's going to be nice having you home. <laughs> no, it ain't. For two weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Get on my nerves. Then it's time to go to work. Then it's time to go to work, right? <laughs> Just doesn't seem real right now. It really doesn't seem real. It's real. Look at all the places that are closing up, the restaurants and stuff that are closing up. The trains, the people that run these trains, they'll be out of a job. For a plant that's going broke, they gave everybody a aerial shot of the plant. Wow. It's a nice big picture. Uh, you open it up, and it's got the thing on it. For some of you, generations of families have worked here, from grandfathers to fathers to mothers, sons and daughters. And regardless of what you were building... We hope that each of you find continued success as you continue as you begin your new chapter in your lives and I wrote on the outside of it remember when you used to have a job happy holidays loser Terrible, we ran out of parts. Run out of hinges. They can't manage nothing. Ain't no wonder we're going out of business. <laughs> and it's not up to the union people to order the parts. It's not up to, it's a management screw up. So what they did, they said, well, we got 350 hinges. And what we I... can run 350 trucks. And but what they didn't realize is there's two hinges per truck, so that's only 175. And these guys get paid $200,000 a year. Right. I hope they kept the receipt. Ask me why, you, why I hope they kept the receipt. I got the receipt, why? So they can return it to their college and get their money back. Right. All of this is getting ready to come to an end. All these years, you know, we had a good time. And we had a long run, and, and, and you know, a lot of people, a lot of people want to, uh, a lot of people want to want to complain and talk about it, and and say bad things. But you can't really say bad things because they took us from '94 to now, and that was a good long run. 
lot of people bought new cars. You know, your life changed. You bought new cars, you got a new we house. Bought houses, we you bought, bought cars. you know, you got to go on vacation. You got to do some of the things your kids want you to do. My grandson's not going to have the life I had. No. I've got a better life than my dad, but my grandson's not going to have the better oper the, the option to have a better life than his grandpa. And that's, and that's, that's the. Know that. that sucks, though. Yeah, it does. Everybody's waiting on that last truck. Yeah, I was like, wow. I can't believe this is going to be the last truck. That's going to be it. When you look at those numbers, then you say, OK, wow, here come the last truck. You got about 100 jobs left. So the closer and closer it got, I keep looking at the, at the numbers, keep looking at the numbers, and I say, wow, it's coming. It's coming. Because I was putting the sticker on. The serial number. The serial number to the truck. This is it, bye bye. This is the last one? The last one. I ain't never seen one of this. And that's it. Job is over. Once you walk out that door, it's like you turn around. I did. I turned around and just looked. I said, wow. What am I going to do now? Hung my guns up and shot my last truck. How did that go? It's different. What do you think you're most proud of? Doing a good job. I gave them 100, more than 100% every day. On my worst days, they still got 100%. What's next for you? Probably take some time off with my body heal. This, this is a rough business. And I'll probably go back to school. Do you know what's next for you? No. <laughs> it's sad. Did you get to see that last truck? Yep. I got pictures of it. Pictures of me with it, signing it under the hood pad. And it's sad. All of our friends are gone. They were like, a, it's like a whole nother family. It's like family. I'm not upset about leaving. I'm just 
a lot of good people. We built that relationship. I built that for 14 years with the people that I work with, and uh, that's gonna be hard to get back. I mean, it's just, it's a factory sense of humor in there that, you know, you could just only know if you just work in there. For me, it's about sharing things, hard things. Um, my oldest daughter had a drug addiction, and that was a very tough time in my life. And some of the two in particular people on the line that I work with helped me tremendously. They were there. Yes, very much so. But it's the family, it's the people, it's your friends. We've shared a lot of things. And every day, right? Every day, all day. Right. I spend more time with them than I do with when I'm at home with my kids. I never cried leaving a job before in my life. What was the hardest thing? S saying goodbye. To everybody I work with. Just hugging all your friends and saying goodbye. What would you say to them? I love you. And I love them all. I love my brothers and sisters at IUE Local 798. I thank you for every one of you that ever, ever worked a day on that line, for every friendship, for every everything I ever had in that place. I love you. I thank you for your service. That's for me. I really ain't got nothing to say. I, I, I found a new family at GM. We spent more time. That's not hard. That's hard. See, we didn't have to do this over there. GM messed up. We was one of the best players. We were like therapy to each other, you know. You know, it's just like going to a bar, you know, and your bartender has to listen to all your problems, you know, your wife, your kids, fighting and fussing, you know. That's how it was, you know? And the sad thing about it is, it really didn't sink in. Until I gave up my badge. I gotta go. The hardest part for me was I had to give my pass. Once you give it up, you no longer have a job. Each person has a job to do on that line, and once they do that job, they go to the next truck, do the same thing to the next truck. So when the last truck came, they didn't have any more jobs to do. But I found a lot of people once they were done, they just followed the last truck. They followed the last truck, or followed the last door that went on that truck. Whatever line they were on, they followed that last part around. And then when we finally got to where the truck was assembled completely, we just had a group of, a group of people. Written, unscripted thing that happened. It was a, it was a force of its own. I'll remember it for the rest of my life. I'll be I'll be uh. I'll be old and telling grandkids about it for years. They'll get sick of hearing that story. <laughs> I 
I just had this vision of this big, gentle dragon that was laying down, taking its last breath. And that was the plant, the building, the equipment, the sounds, the smells, um, like it had been a living, breathing entity and it was dying. The different parts of the body were shutting down. The steam pipes and the air hoses, sparks coming out of the robots with the heat. And you just imagine everything just You could hear it dying. You could hear it getting quiet. And then you could see the people walk off the job. And you, you, you know, you, I could hardly talk to anybody or say goodbye. Um, that's the toughest thing I ever did. Um, they won't be coming back. And, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be. Well, I know I'm not going to be, and just to uh, realize that it, it is the end.